Welcome everyone, it's Sunday, October 22nd, and it is, it is, it is, what I, I suddenly threw in some Dutch there. Uh, this is episode 157 of the Omelette Quickly. I'm going to stick to English. Um, maybe one day we'll do a whole Dutch podcast, and Frozen, who is here, will just be staying at the scene going, what the fuck is he saying? I'll just be going, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hi, hey, hi hey, everyone. Hey, hey Frozen. Our languages are not that far apart, so you, sh you should manage. Like the occasional word, that's how I kind of understand you guys. When they occasionally kind of go off in German while we're playing Overwatch games, I generally know when they're saying something bad. Uh, usually it's Keisha yelling at the, the microphone. I understand like half of it. It's pretty close. Of the Dutch, I hope, not the German. Yeah, yeah. How you sure. doing? <laughs> sure. How you doing, Frozen? <sighs> doing things here and there, but in general, it's... It's fine. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Doing things here and there. <laughs> I've been have been having a busy week and I think the next few weeks are going to be crazy busy with BlizzCon coming up. I'm preparing, I'm I'm still in doing like <clears throat> I'm you know, with the whole kind of going full time broad uh, uh contact rate, you also need to kind of uh, find time to run a business on top of that and then I'm trying to evolve everything, improve everything. And now, yesterday, we got to hear that we can stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So I need to get that set up for this week and podcast it. But, you know, keeping busy while the girlfriend is sick in bed. Uh, <clears throat> I was just uh, telling Frozen that I was avoiding all the cons that are happening right here in Belgium because I'm leaving for BlizzCon in a few weeks. And I didn't want to kind of catch any of the con flus. And now the flu is in my house. But the thing is... I had that same flu like a few weeks ago or the same. I think like the symptoms are very identical to what I had a few weeks ago. So I, I presume that I'm pretty safe and it's still ample time. If I get sick, I'll, I'll be healed by a blizz gone. It's, uh, yeah, you should be fine. Yeah, it's still like 10 days or something. So before I leave, mm -hmm. actually, um, blizz gone is still two weeks away. But anyways, <clears throat> Hannah could not make it today. She was uh, still not feeling well. She, she, she used a lot of her energy to be here last week to kind of poop mm. on uh, Bobby Kotick's head. Uh, Lawrence, I have no idea. His uh, girlfriend went back to Germany. I, he's missing in action. We are thinking of sending uh, a helicopter, but the helicopter pilots are kind of worried to fly over Florida. Uh, yeah, Florida is a bit difficult. Yeah, not flying. because of the gators, though, because of the Florida men. They, they, those are the mm. most scary parts of uh, Florida. <laughs> if we have listeners from Florida, I apologize. Okay. My apologies. I'm sorry. It's just a but running gag. It's a running gag. It's just a joke. Uh, because our, our good friend LP is from uh, Germany. <coughs> sorry for the cough occasionally. I'll try to mute myself as much as possible. I still can't shake it. I don't know. It, it just keeps... It's getting better and better, but really slowly. But in a few weeks, there should be an episode without coughs. Um, but yeah, we just... Just the two of us first, and we're going to go through all the the Overwatch happenings of this week. And let's be honest, there, there have been a few of them. There was one humongous blog post, one of the most interesting director takes that Aaron Keller has posted in in a long time. Like, um, I don't know, do you read all of his director takes? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, you do, <laughs> because he helped me out with the post, so we, mm. we kind of all read them up. But... Um, like lately, they were kind of, I don't know, a little standoffish, maybe not the word. That is not the correct word at all, but never. And they kind of always stayed on the surface. There wasn't like anything that was like, oh shit, really? Like, mm. but this time around, holy hell. I mean, honestly, like usually I know that like one or two things are in a blog post that are worthy to talk about. If as like if there are any, mm -hmm. and this time I was like, oh, I have to write this down. I have to write this down. Oh my god, I have to write this down. You actually needed a list to keep track yeah, of everything. I, I actually needed to, to make a list to keep track. It was crazy. Like, yeah, we haven't seen such a filled blog post with things to talk about and interesting stuff. Uh, exactly, and, and just time. mere weeks before BlizzCon, before they actually are going to drop the big news mm -hmm. and all the big updates. The fact that he uh, and and I I kind of see it as a signal. I don't think it's a coincidence that this type of blog post comes like literally a week or a little well just other week 
they usually post. Look, I'm, uh, I've, I've complained about this a million times, but I am convinced that Blizzard has cameras on me, and the moment they see I left house, that they stop dropping shit like this. Like they usually do the director blogs on Fridays, which is perfect for me. Um, and I've, <clears throat> I make sure to kind of plan around that because I know they will be happening every two weeks and keep it in mind and whatnot. And on Thursday, I wanted to celebrate the fact that I was been that I have been a content creator full time for a month now. I kind of make some content in my hometown. I was going to go filming and eat uh, a nice dinner with my girlfriend. Um, <clears throat> while just in the middle of dinner, while I was eating my uh, very delicious spaghetti, that news dropped, and I was like, "I'm going to censor this one." I know it's a podcast, mother. F- Seriously, right now at this time, while I'm eating. You know, one time I go out for lunch, or for dinner, rather. All right, fine. But luckily, uh, Uber and uh, Frozen had my back. The time I came back, What's everything was kind of posted. I mean, it's a Thursday. Like, the only thing that happens on a Thursday usually is the drop of a new season, but I wasn't expecting anything. So it was like, I was about to play competitive with uh, Janus and Cordy, uh, like, two people, like, um... But, I hope they're two people, otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to play competitive, and as like right before we wanted to go in, I saw like your ad. I was like, "Sorry, guys, play some without me. I have <laughs> things to do." <laughs> they told me I, I thought it was like a few minutes. Like that was fine because usually those blog posts, I was like, "I'm gonna read this. It's gonna be fine." I was like, "Guys, I think I need a bit longer." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, anyways, like, there's nothing we can do. I, I guess it's unlucky. It's kind of uh, circumstantial. I do not really believe that they're keeping track of me, just to make that clear. I'm not, I'm not that well, big-headed. Um, but first, maybe, like, one of the things that we also mentioned before we go into the more... the, the, the uh, I'm not going to say the fun stuff, the, the game-related stuff. Uh, but what Aaron also mal- mentioned, and that uh, we may might uh, start off with, Jesus Christ, that was a beautiful sentence, um, is the the Lyser- seraphim. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly or not. I don't know either. Yeah, there's a K-pop band, a uh, girl K-pop band, because there's a difference. There's like all boy K-pop bands and all girl K-pop bands. There's also mixed, if I'm correct. But yeah, but very few, cool. very few, very few apparently. Those are quite rare, but yeah, yeah it's a girl k-pop band i i um i i my, my girlfriend is kind of into well kind of um, she is into k-pop uh but she listens more to the uh mm. the, the the male bands and but yeah there's black pink apparently which is a big k-pop mm. band with all girls and then there's this one uh i have no idea but that doesn't mean like that i am about to poop on all that because of the or, or on the collaboration because of that i don't really care that much i'm like i'm it's fun for the people that enjoy that music. Mm. Go at it. Have fun. I am curious to see what the skins are going to look like, what they're going to do with that. Definitely. From Looks- what I heard, Le Seraphim is also kind of a big deal because they're from the same publisher that published BTS. Yeah, yeah that's something. Yeah, the organization or something yeah, like this. The, this whole like the, company. Yeah, I don't know what it is exactly. Yeah, my girlfriend told me that. I think. Mm. Just, I said, oh, there's a collab coming with a K-pop band, a girl band. And uh, she was like, what are they called? I'm like, was it Blackpink? No, no, it's not Blackpink. It's uh, the the Seraphim. Oh yeah, yeah, I know them. They're in the same uh, organization or company as BTS. And I was like, oh really? BTS is only the one I remember. It's kind of cool that they're branching out into these different kinds of things. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe the band members like to play Overwatch. <laughs> no, they already did a bit of a collaboration in the sense that um, a few months ago we had this this this. Uh, what was it called? Like the goggles? It's not. It's not like glasses. It's more of the diva, uh, gentle, gentle monster glasses. I don't even remember that. There was this V color skin that they mm, uh, threw yeah. in the shop for that event, or two of them. Uh, people were really upset that they were only V colors and that they had to pay for them. Um, and um, there were these, yeah, special glasses. I think it, it, they call them glasses. For me, it's more like goggles or anything, but, uh, because they have the ears on there and whatnot, the diva ears. And uh, the girls from La Cerf have also posted pictures with those glasses on. They were kind of involved in the campaign. So it's not a super big coincidence that it's them that are going to do this collaboration mm-hmm. and not anybody else. Um, but yeah. A lot of celebrities got these glasses. I think they make like 300 of them, if I'm correct. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, really? Was it limited like- edition? 
there was a limited edition. If you got these glasses, you got a coat, for which you got a special recolor uh, uh, of the skin. I think it was pink, and the one you could get in the shop was blue. So it's like very, very rare skin, and like a bunch of celebrities, like Billie Eilish, Les Seraphim, and like people like that. Oh, got really? Okay, those cool. glasses. So that was like a, I think, a promotional thing uh, Overwatch did. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, th- that that story is now getting a a separate. Uh, how do you say that? I'm not going to say an ending. Who knows what is coming next? But um, we know that there's going to be a game mode involved in this, which is kind of surprising. I did not expect mm-hmm. them to do a game mode for something commercial like this, because in the end, this is kind of more of a commercial deal. Mm. Um, and diff- different legendary skins. There was uh, there was not one skin, but skins. It's closer to the One Punch Man collaboration than it is to anything else that they've done in the past. Mm, so we'll true. see. We'll know Maybe. more about it in a few weeks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they're going to perform at BlizzCon, by the way. Which, yeah. by the way, we still don't have an, a detailed schedule on BlizzCon. We don't know which panel is happening when and what. Nothing. That's weird. Yeah, they're really, really late. I don't know what's happening. But I guess they, they're they still working on it. <laughs> that should come soon. I mean, at least a, like a week before. Oh, yeah. I hope so. Usually... Usually they are quite like uh, at least a month ahead of of uh, BlizzCon. It, it gives mm. you the chance to kind of plan everything. But no, no, no we need to wait. Um, I think it's maybe because it's the first time they're doing it in a long time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they did not. I do think they're doing panels because they referenced some panels in some other, or like in the I read somewhere in I don't know where on the website, like. Uh, the panels will be streamed, or this will be... I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Um, we just need to wait and see. But that collaboration is coming. We'll know more about it on uh, October 30th. They're going to share all the information. On November 1st, which is two days later, it's going to start. And um, then on October 4th, uh, November 4th, they will be performing at the closing night of uh, BlizzCon, which is apparently now also the community night. Back in the day, last time they did it, there was the Friday night was community night. Uh, Saturday night was the closing night. But I think it's probably has something to do with the World Cup and whatnot, and they, they kind of wanted to reschedule it. We'll see. Uh, but that was a uh, that was uh, the, the collaboration. That was one of the things that Aaron talked about. But let's be honest, without any ill intent towards people that enjoy that music, that was the least important one of the whole thing. Uh, let maybe start out with the bad news: the Broadhog rework was delayed. Um, we don't know how long. They said they were planning to release it in the mid season. Balancing patch. Now they said later this season. Yeah, so that gives them like whatever, five weeks. Whatever they mean, yeah. Yeah, that gives them <laughs> five weeks to release it. <clears throat> they did say they have, did share some important information that they're tackling his primary fire. That is going to get a change. Mm. His um, take a breeder, so his healing ability is going to take a change, and he's getting a brand new ability. Now, that would make you think that his hook and his ultimate are safe, and I think his ultimate. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about that. His hook, I hope I hope they keep it intact. But I don't know. Like when they get a new ability, that usually means that something has to give. Um maybe they're doing the same thing with the I don't know. They're not going to make the hook a passive. I don't know. Maybe they're giving him an extra ability. If is there room for an extra ability for Broadhog? Hmm. Oh really? Like he has his right click. Oh, that might be it. Maybe might, you might can remove change, his right click. Maybe you can change from like they remove his right click, and you then can change from your weapon to the hook. That could be a possibility. Yeah, yeah. But oh yeah. I yeah. don't know how else they would do it. <clears throat> that might be his right click. I think they might uh, switch his right click over to uh, that. That might be the new ability. We'll see. Mm. It would be like a roadhog without a hook. I don't think that would work. Let's be honest. I think we all agree on that. Uh, it's kind of his thing. Yeah, it is his thing. I, I mean, the whole scorpion kind of vibe. The get over here, you know that thing. I would really miss it if he. And I think they would agree. Uh, I don't think they're planning to do that. And his ultimate. I mean, <clears throat> it's it, it is an ultimate that has been through so many different phases and that went through so many different changes where it used to be devastatingly uh, powerful. Uh, then it was just some kind of pushback that would push you wherever they wanted you to be. Um, now it's somewhere in the middle. We'll see what they where they come up with. But 
I mean, it's not the, the worst uh, ultimate that we've seen in the game. Definitely not. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and that is going to be kind of a, another disruption in the whole meta. Look at what Sombra did. I don't know. It is kind of insane. I've, I've told you guys my opinion on the... Uh, on, on, uh, I don't know. I think Frozen kind of agrees with me, but I'll leave it to her to add to that. Uh, but I really like the new Sombra. I think they did an amazing job on, on the rework, and they made her into a hero I actually enjoy playing now. I can understand for people that have been playing her for years the way she was before that the change is kind of, well, something hard to swallow and there's something to get over. But I've seen like some diehard Sombra players going, you know what, once you get used to it, it's actually more fun. It's actually a, a good change. It's actually something in the positive direction. But I've also seen many people kind of complain like, it's a nerf, it's a nerf, they nerfed her, they broke her. I don't agree. What do you think? Been a huge Sombra player. I never really picked her up because I'm not that much of a flanking kind of uh, type of person. I'm either in the backline or a go in. That's my two modes. But I don't know. I've been, I've been having fun. I, have, I of course tried her out, and uh, honestly, I feel bad for my fellow supports. But harassing the supports is quite fun, I sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you were, uh, we we played a few games this week where we we had a, we were both on support and we had a more uh, kind of harassing us. But let's be honest, like once you get over that thing that I said on last week's episode, that she cannot disappear completely. When she teleports away, she is still close. You need to push through. You need to harass her back, and kind of you don't need to do it by yourself. Depending on who you're playing, but I saw you kill Sombras more than once playing Anna. Yeah. And, She's and, uh, way better to counter now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of people are kind of support players are complaining because they are focusing or she is focusing them. But one, those people are, in my opinion, playing her the wrong way. I mean, depending on the situation, of course, like there's always a reason to I'm the first to yell in any voice chat, kill the supports, get that mercy. I'll be the first to yell that mm-hmm. But to kind of just being only harassing the, the backline and the supports. Is not going to pay off because she's going to die. She can't get away. So she has to reset. She has to come back from spawn. By the way, the best feature they added in the last weeks is that group respawn. I'm not kidding. Yeah. That was True. that is such a small change with such a huge impact. Like I never spawn alone. Uh, what is that song? You never walk alone. You never spawn alone. <laughs> yeah, we should actually make a song about that. Makes uh, things so much easier in general. It forces people to group up. I tweeted about it. <clears throat> Aaron, uh, Aaron Keller. Uh, Jared News reacted to it. I was happy to hear that. And he said, he literally said, yeah, it's kind of mild at this point. Uh, we didn't want to kind of push it too hard. And I, I was thinking when I was tweeting about it that I was going to add, like, I wonder how far they can push it. But he, without me saying that, he said himself, like, it's still kind of mild the way it's set up right now. And what that makes me think that they can push it further and that they're thinking about pushing it further. So that the the, uh, the window in which you will group up or that you will spawn together will be enhanced. So if you die within six seconds of each other, of eight seconds of each other, that you group up in, in one, uh, uh, or spawn in one group. Which at some point, right now, what I often see is that we're like, we're two or three people. That is, like, when I spawn, I never spawn, I almost never spawn alone. I always spawn with two or three people, which means we're doing pretty good because we need to group up. And if you if you die all by yourself, you're messing up. That's basically it. Um, <clears throat> they could make that three to four. And then, I don't know, there's always someone like a Tracer, a Sombra, or a, a Diva that is kind of been able to kind of fall back and they need to fall back at that point you can regroup really quickly and i think that makes the 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 speed of the game the rhythm of the game even faster and it makes sure that everybody groups up and your everything you're doing is going to be way more impactful it shows the value of grouping up and i think it's one of the best features they've added in a long time Mm. well i i really i mean it's a bit of an exaggeration but still i think it is a good good uh good feature that's definitely a good feature. Yeah. Like, especially for newer players. Like, because I saw when I p- was playing either alone or with like one more person, and we noticed we had some new players either on our team or the enemy team. I imagine that like 
you don't have it that like everybody just runs in and dies constantly mm -hmm. but their newer <clears throat> players are kind of forced to group up and maybe at some point they realize hey this works better <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because but you, like, i remember but, as like or like me as a new player i was just constantly running in because i didn't know and, and some look there's not only new players i've seen places the players that have been playing this game for years do it I've seen people in our community do it that I have to tell them, like, stop pushing in by yourself. Wait for us. Wait for us. And, um, yeah, some people just get a little, uh, well, the way Akila says it, uh, one of the one of the community members. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, leave. This is going to end up on YouTube, so I'm not going to say it, but he has a very particular way of uh, putting, uh, of, of labeling people that get a little too... Uh, <laughs> too confident. <laughs> too confident. That's the right. Yeah, thank you. I was stuck in my head with the one word. I couldn't find another one. Anyway, so Sombra, look, uh, support players, if you... I mean, I'm playing on, on Platinum level, so it's a different story. If you're playing on Master and Grandmaster, the, the Sombras are probably a little better than they are on my level. Uh, but just realize that they're not far away and that you can... Apparently, you can still kill them easily. That is actually a beautiful segue. Yeah. Um... Now, Sombra, with the supports we have right now, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. You can't counter her, but I wonder how it's going to be when the supports get nerfed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at that. We made a perfect segue. I love the way that I always point out, point out the segues, just to ruin them in a way. But anyways, um, <laughs> no, one of the other things that Aaron talked about is that they do realize that supports are a little potent right now when it comes to pushback, when it comes to, um, uh, well, just basically kicking everybody's ass. And that was basically the result of them ramping up uh, some of the utility to make a, to give them the options to defend themselves because at the start, or like a year ago, we were getting rolled so hard. It was almost impossible to stay alive as a support player. And they tried to fix that. But by fixing that, they also created a new issue. And that is that, one, a lot of DPS players are just switching to support because they are, in general, more viable. They can heal, heal themselves, and do a ton of damage. So you get that situation. And then the ones that are paying the price are the tanks because they have nowhere to go. There's no tools for them to kind of control anything. So you get this weird situation where the one role is feeling... Very underwhelming. Another role is kind of being, I'm not going to say abandoned, but it's not as favorable right now. And then uh, by, its, by its own players. And then you have one role that is a little too strong. So they're going to address that. And the way they want to do it is very, well, carefully kind of uh, attack that utility they have and bring them back a little bit, bring them down a little bit. And I do suspect that at the start, we're going to see some outliners. I think for about 80% of the heroes or 70% of the heroes, like, I'm going to say, like, uh, the supports, rather. Like, a Lucio, I think he can deal with a little uh, less utility. I think he he has so much in his arsenal. He has so many options. He can do so many different things to survive and to be useful in his, for his team in other ways than just healing that taking some of it away is not going to make a huge difference. Well, there will be others, like, um, I'm thinking a Zinyara and an Ana that are very vulnerable, that are now... Well, Anna especially quite strong because of the extra utility they got, or because they are such good supports in on a on a, on a basic level that those might be uh, that might kind of be uh, causing some issues, especially in a in the first instance. We'll see. That worries me a bit because I, I I don't know, but I think we can pinpoint some of the supports that are just a bit too much to be able to survive for example we have a life weaver, life weaver I, i've seen life weavers who just have zero deaths mm -hmm. in, in a push game or anything it's like how can you survive it's like three ults how is that possible that's yeah. ridiculous yeah. so i think life weaver has like a little survivability issue especially Moira. with his healing output moira definitely with her fate she could just fade out of almost anything. I mean, they kind of try to counter that. She cannot fade out, out of anything anymore. No, the grabs hindered. and whatnot, but yeah, the thing Being is... Hindered. Yeah. <laughs> but she still, like, Moira, with her healing and her damage and her fade, difficult to... Yari is just... She's just gonna kill you. Let's face it. She's a mm. DPS. 
it's healing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of our like one of our communities, uh, Widowmaker players, uh, actually switched is now an Yari main because and he plays her like a DPS. If you have to mm. play support with Scorpio, oh, you're going to be working hard. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I mean, and I say that with all the love, but he really loves her because she is such a good DPS, and he basically kind of got all the sniping fun he got out of Widow. He put it in a Yari, and uh, he's having a blast. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, there definitely are a few support heroes that need a little tuning. The problem is if they start to, if they're going to do some kind of blanket thing with a uh, just a passive where they kind of. I don't know, they, they bring something in that will kind of be a general rule for all the supports, that might be a problem. If they're going to kind of look at them one by one and tune them accordingly, we, we, we're going to be okay. And I think, to be honest, I think the second option is the one that's most likely going to happen. Uh, but I can understand that people are worried. I mean, we've seen it. We are in this situation because of choices that were made in the past. And, and not faulting Blizzard for that, because I've said this a million times, <laughs> Overwatch is... Such a difficult game to balance. It's never going to be balanced. If you ever hope to have an Overwatch 2 that is going to be completely balanced, you get it. I mean, you might feel for yourself like it's pretty balanced, but your neighbor will be like, no, man, I can't play this game. It doesn't work for me because they have another play style. They main other heroes. They are on a different level. It has, brings all these differences, all these differentiators into the, the calculation. And um, yeah. It kind of makes it very difficult to... Well, I'm not going to say to please everybody, but to make it balanced for everybody. So That's never Devil, going to happen. It's hard if an entire role is disliked because it basically feels like you're doing nothing. I think that shouldn't like be a thing, especially with like tanks. Mm -hmm. They kind of... <clears throat> like, especially there's only one. I think it, you should feel more impact when you play one. Yeah, yeah. What well, we talked about this multiple times by now. Like, uh, I st like, I'm still convinced that they need. Uh, okay, this is going to help out a little bit, and I think they're being very careful because Roadhog is coming in, and the next season the new tank hero is coming in, Maga. <laughs> it's not going to be Maga, man. Everybody's going to do a hissy fit, but um, and those two heroes are going to be very disruptive for their role in general. And think I think after that they're going to have to look at all the support, uh, all the tank heroes, and kind of figure out some some ways of helping them out a little bit. I think uh, just to kind of freshen them up, but also in this new, very fast world where it's not getting any easier with all the new heroes that are being added. The next is going to be a new DPS. That is going to be another kind of disruptor. I mean, it's going to get more and more difficult if they don't lean into that. They're no longer tanks, they're brawlers, uh, storyline, and kind of give them control over the... Uh, like, they need to be in charge of the battlefield. The two tanks need to be the ones that kind of uh, basically overview everything and create room and, and get countered in the, creating that room by the other tank and whatnot, but we'll see. Mm. No, definitely. I think it, there's a reason why we're getting a support nerf before the Roadhog rework and the new tank hero. I think that that's kind of also a reason why the Roadhog rework got delayed because the support nerf is coming in the mid-season patch. Mm -hmm. So be. I think they kind of want to adjust that and have like that baseline before they mm -hmm. like introduce Roadhog and a new tank into the roster. Yeah, they didn't say that much uh, as much, but they said some tweaks, and those tweaks might have been triggered by what they did to the supports. Definitely. I wonder why they don't say that out loud. I, w I wonder why they're kind of so uh, mysterious about it. Like, it doesn't really make sense. It would be a very clear thing to say. Hey, we need a bit more time because we need to adjust them again because we're nerfing the supports, but yeah. they're not. Well, maybe it's not. It's just not the case. Maybe it has nothing to do with that and there were different tweaks. Or, I don't know, there might be. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the other scenario where they, uh, they have... A tendency to be very mysterious about everything that they do around that part. And I think it might have something to do with the fact that as soon as you put something out there, it becomes a sort of reality that they no longer have control over. They don't have control over the narrative because people pick it up and they start kind of uh, referencing to whatever you said for the next 10 years 
without the context. And then you get this situation where anything you said can be used against you because it is not in the wrong context and not on the right timestamp. And so I can, to a point, understand it because everybody, this community is full of experts. Everybody knows how to balance best. Um, I mean, I can have a general remark about, I feel like the tanks are not brawly enough and they need more air control. That's about as far as I go. There are people actually made a reference to that in my latest video. And I don't think every, I don't think a lot of people or that some people didn't appreciate the comparison, but I compare it to, you know, that there's always this old guy standing next to a, a construction site mm. and with his harmons, you know, they always have that typical pose where they have their hands on their back and they're just <laughs> looking. Late. The middle and then, aged man, like, who? like middle aged, no, no, head, old head, man, the old head, man, the old man, like head a little bit forward, the glasses yeah. are here, yeah. like they have this, this cap on and they have this raincoat because even if it starts raining, they're going to stick there. And every time one of those construction workers comes close enough to them, they'll go, Are you going to do it that way? Shouldn't you be using this? Shouldn't you be like trying to tell them how to do their job? Um, mm. that's what I feel like it, that our community sometimes sounds like if we are. Uh, we all have our opinions on how things should be balanced. And I mean, you can only appreciate the love and the, the passion that people have to kind of try and figure it out for themselves. And everybody should do that if they feel like inclined to do that. And you know what? Some people might have it by the right end. Uh, very few, but some might. Um, but I mean, you, you should never take yourself too seriously about uh, there, there's so much, so much that comes with it. Um, and I know trust is low, but. I think uh, I think they have the people on the job. I think we need to remember remember that. But right, anyways, let's see what else they talked about. Um, yeah, they talked about some other stuff that they're going to show off at BlizzCon. Of course, the big being the new hero that they're going to be announcing, the tank hero. They have not even given the smallest hint apart from everything that we've seen on Samoa, <laughs> which is kind of big, let's be honest. The Samoa, in case you have missed it, there's a MAGA shirt hanging in a hut. It has a Zarya fan poster on the wall that has a, a book in there with a picture of Batiste that is uh, circled and shows that he's in uh, Gibraltar working for Overwatch now. So that was Maga's hut. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, so either the kind of trolling is really hard, putting a lot of effort in it, or we're going to see Maga uh, in two weeks. But um, yeah, so that is going to be soon enough. Sorry? People will go rampage if they don't. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be insane. Like we've said it before, but the only heroes that you can get away with are a Jetpack Cat and Mama Home. You get yeah. it. Anybody else you'll show off is going to get a boo because people want MAGA. Well, a lot of people want MAGA. Not everybody does. I don't want to generalize. Um, something else they're going to be showing off, apart from all their plans that they have for the next few months, but also for the next year, and 2024, and... Um, they have some, well, they're going to be showing off a lot of content that is coming basically in the next 12 months. And it's going to be small stuff like what they still have planned for this season. Because if you think about it, we don't know that much about this season. We know that the Halloween event is going to end right after BlizzCon. And what's going to be next? We don't know. Well, we'll find out at BlizzCon. Uh, and they're also going to be showing off the comp rework. And that is something that I expect we're going to see in a panel. But yeah, comp is going to get reworked to... 2.1 because this was comp 2.0 so we're getting another rework and we're going to 2.1 i've seen a lot of kind of uh i'm not going to say negativity around this announcement but people are kind of um oh, hesitant to kind of uh be too enthusiastic about it they're kind of wary they're kind of scared let me just put it this way. The fact that they, one year in, that they're willing to kind of rework it all completely and that they're basically, based on our feedback, want to change it all over again. They're not doing that for their own pleasure. They're not doing that because they don't agree with us. They're not doing that because they want to be uh, just doing their own thing in their own way. The fact that they're open to change and that they're going to kind of show it off at BlizzCon is a clear proof that, um, that they listen. And... I think we just need to listen to a bit of an open mind and see what they're going to come up with. If we have feedback, to give that feedback in a humane way, which is very important. And then once it's implemented, we'll have to try it and, and figure it out again. If that works, if that is good. You're never going to find the perfect system out of nowhere. That doesn't happen. You don't pull something like that out of your... Um, but I think the sometimes the... Uh, 
the censoring works better than any word you could have said. Like everybody has is kind of wondering where they pulled it out of. But you know what I meant. I was talking about your. There we go. <laughs> um. So yeah, that is also something to need to be talking about. And then um, the biggest surprise for me in that whole blog post was that they also announced that they're not going to be talking about this at BlizzCon, but more somewhere early 2024, are some battle pass and some shop changes. That is for me, like I was saying earlier at the start of this conversation about the blog post, that I feel it's no coincidence that they're doing this right after Microsoft bought the company. I do think that I've always thought that there was a bit of... um, a difference between what the developers wanted for the game when it came to monetization and what corporate wanted for the game when it comes to monetization. I think there was uh, uh, some colliding opinions and that they weren't always on the same page when it came to the choices that were made. And that it was a back and forth. And that any time we saw something in our favor that it came from the developer side and everything we saw something, every time we saw something uh, in, in Blizzard's favor that it was more of, um, all right, we, we can't stop this or we need to kind of, I mean... You need to give and take at some point. And I think they they now see the room to maybe do some adjustments. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe corporate has not been butting in at all. And maybe they just see some better opportunities. It's hard to tell. It's a black box. We don't know. But they are going to do some changes to the way the battle pass works and how the shop is going to work with a new take been some kind of time coming like the complaints were there from season one about Mm -hmm. the battle pass and the shop and everything and they made a few changes in between but i mean especially after the thing they did with the mortar lilith skin they included it into this uh, ultimate battle pass i think that was kind of the last thing that uh the old CEO kind of did <laughs> maybe to squeeze out some more money i don't know <laughs> i don't know I, I, don't, I really don't know where that decision came from sometimes i think it's just kind of some sort of look if i had to imagine myself being in a meeting at that point and um they must have known that this was not going to go well oh definitely they must have known that this was going to give get a lot of pushback because that skin was so popular it was it is such a beautiful skin it is it is basically the centerpiece of this whole event. And the fact that they put it in a 40 bucks bundle is, is, must have been something that they cannot have been too ignorant about and not have known that it would have caused issue. So I'm wondering what the whole conversation was in, on their end and how that all went down, how they ended up in this situation. How many people were like, I don't know if this is a good idea, guys. I don't think we need to do this. I think we need to find a different way. I don't think this is the skin to put in there. Or it was just like, a meeting of five minutes and someone made a stupid decision i don't know but uh they also addressed the whole thing and aaron did in his blog post and he said like yeah we heard your feedback and and we agree and we're going to be looking we're still going to put skins like that in that 40 bucks bundle or the ultimate bundle he did not say anything about the being 40 bucks we're still going to be ultimate bundles because to be honest i do like the ultimate bundles i i like the fact that they exist but up till now they had always been uh, the ultimate bundles had been 20 level skips, the, ba- the premium battle pass, of course, some extra coins. And then you had two skins. They weren't the best skins in the game uh, in that season, but they were definitely in, let's say, top five. They were really decent skins. They were really kind of skins. They were like, oh, shit, I'm kind of happy to have those, which is the difference. Like, let's call them maybe not uh, S-tier skins, but more like A-tier, B-tier. And then um, but this time they took the S-tier and it dropped it in in that pass and that was a mistake um and also the fact that the price kind of went up even if you put in an extra uh epic skin i mean no that's kind of for some people that just want that one skin it's just insane and they recognize that so what they're going to be doing in the future is looking into different ways so people that just want that skin that they can get it now don't <clears throat> i wouldn't if you if you think that there's going to be ways to earn it don't do that I mean, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. It might. And if it happens, you're going to be extremely happy. But just don't start off with the idea that you can get it for free. I think we need to uh, start to accept that, that you always need to go for the worst scenario. And if it turns out to be better, to be thankful for that. But um, so many people that keep falling for that same old story again. But anyways, uh, we'll see how that can turns out. What are you going to do with that exactly? And if it's going to be happening with the Mora skin already, because... 
yeah, up to now we haven't seen anything like that. We haven't seen a new way of getting that skin. It's in that bundle still. There's no separate way of getting it. And I do hope they change that at some point. Maybe I have it. Sometime later. I, I mean, I have it too. It's <clears> gorgeous. <laughs> but maybe sometime later. But I don't think that before the Halloween event ends and everything that we will get to see something like that. No. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, I, sometimes they surprise me on the, the, the speed at which they get, get things fixed. And I think uh, Jared News has a lot to do with it. He's kind of the... I'm looking, he doesn't do all the day-to-day -day planning of everybody, but he does it on an executive level. And he can... Uh, he, if he thinks it's going to benefit the game in general, he will push something forward and push it through and work with the people really closely to get it done. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but like that whole story of the ballot pass and the shop changes coming in, that is going to be a big test moment for them. It's going to kind of... They have gone through these different phases where... I always kind of say like a PvE release is going to be a big test. And up till now, and, and I, I, I say that as, as someone that tries to stay in the middle of the road and as neutral as possible, but they have failed every of these tests. Um, the way they brought things up, the way they communicated about these things, the way they rolled things out, it always has, there always has been something that the people that want to blatantly hate or the people that want to... Like the majority of the community kind of has something to kind of bite into and drag everything down for everybody and i mean if it's there it's not like they're making this up it, there's definitely issues uh but they just get kind of um blown up really fast and uh, up to now they have not had that the overwatch 2 release was messy the pve release was yeah if you if you're going to tell people that a huge part of what they were looking forward to is going to be missing and there's not really something to make up for that but rather like something that Everybody had kind of feared would be happening. Like, the PvE missions were amazingly cool, but they definitely had their issues. We've talked about this in the past. I think they need this moment where they show that they underline the fact that they're here for us and that they're here to make an awesome game. And I believe that is the fact. I, there's no doubt in, in, in my mind that they generally want to do that. They just That's need to kind of rack up the... Uh, sorry? That's definitely the case. Yeah. But I think th there's very few people that still believe that or still feel that. Because we, we can kind of feel because we are so strongly kind of connected or kind of keeping an eye on everything that happens on a minute level that you, you, start, you start to see the pattern. You start to see the attempts. You notice these small things. We also follow a lot of people. I personally have at least follow a lot of people that work on the game on Twitter. And then I see their personal reflections and I see how they react and how proud they are. It's something that they have been working on. Is, is part of the game and a lot of signals. And just in general, I mean, I've worked in the industry myself and a lot of people that are being, um, are being accused of um, just being in there for the money. Uh, no, they, they generally are not. They're, these are all passionate people that are gamers themselves and that are just in there because they want to make awesome games. But they need to get the tools and they need to get the platform to do it. And that has not been the case up till now. <laughs> And I hope that they, um, they they slowly but steadily can, with all these changes, with a new battle pass and a new shop system, that more people are going to like. There's definitely going to be people that still are going to hate it because there is, for some reason, still a strong part of this community that believes that everything needs to be free. They refuse to pay for anything. What's going to happen, guys? Get real. Come on. <laughs> it's just not, that's not realistic on any level. Um, yeah. Like, you need to pay the people who work on your game. Where yeah. is that money going to come from? Thin air? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but I, I, now I'm going to sound like a really old man. But I feel like the gamer community in general is just kind of the entitlement that I sometimes see. One example I saw is from a completely different game, but it's a game that we in the community play quite often, is Phasmophobia. So I saw this whole story that was not... I, I don't follow Phasmophobia the same way I do. I just enjoy playing the game occasionally, and that's it. I don't follow up on all the news. If a new patch comes out, a new build comes out, we talk about it on Discord, but it's not like I'm kind of keeping track of everything that happens. But apparently there was this whole thing. <clears throat> this is going to sound extremely silly. If you've ever played Phasma, especially, if you're someone like myself that plays it on a casual level, not like every single day that you're already level 2000 by now, but, well, it doesn't work that way anymore, but um, they, there was a problem with the lighting. They changed the pipeline, and for some reason, the shadows are really dark in the game. If you don't know the game, it's a ghost hunting game. You run around in a house, 
and you need to figure out which uh, uh, ghost is hunting that house. That's basically the setup. And people were accusing the developers of doing it on purpose and sending death threats and being very abusive and, and hating on the... And even after they came on Reddit and explained like, no, no, it's just because we changed our pipeline and and we, we changed into a new version of Unity. It kind of turned out a little dark. We've been working on fixing it. We're going to fix it somewhere in the next few updates. People were just kind of still hammering on that same nail, like, and 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 asking refunds and, and hitting the table. I paid for this game. What is this? this these, these corners in the kitchen are so dark. Like, it's a ghost game where it's dark. Uh, What's the issue? I don't understand. Uh, like all these what? stupid kind of things that people feel so entitled to because they paid 19 bucks four years ago. Yeah, it's like you got your, I don't know how many hours of playtime out of there. Like, it is a good game. Why are you so, like, riled up that the corners are a bit darker than you? Just have fun. Just have fun. Stop kind of nitpitting and kind of. Because for you, that might be a little too dark and other people might just enjoy it or <clears throat> might think that the corners are a little too light or that, I don't know, whatever. It's always going to be something. That's basically my point. And it's not like you paid like uh, $4,000 to kind of, I mean, I paid the same amount for a, a movie ticket two years ago. Um, and now I would go back like, you know what, movie theater, I had a bag of chips Back at your theater, like four years ago, where I paid fifteen bucks for a dual seat, and I got another brand of chips, and those taste slightly better. So I want my money back for my movie experience that I had with you four years ago. Like, I mean, you're not going to a restaurant again, like that you've been last year, and say, "Hey, your food was shit. I want my money back." <laughs> yeah, what, exactly. What, what's the point? If you if you're the food was shit, you just don't go back. Exactly. As simple as that. If you if you don't enjoy the game, if you think it's something, I mean, you're totally entitled to think that the shadows are too dark. If you think that too dark, just don't play the game anymore. But don't act like the developer is kind of taking away your firstborn child and punching it in the face till it looks like a, like a bag of Doritos or something. I mean, that's a weird thing, a weird comparison to make, but you know what I mean. Like, don't get all high and mighty. I mean, you should be able to give feedback on the games that we play. But the moment it crosses the line and the moment that it becomes this thing, you know what it is? I may, I've talked about this a million times. There are voices in every single community that are loud. And there are a lot of people that just listen to those voices and echo those same opinions and that go to Reddit, on Reddit and echo those same opinions. And right now, the whole content uh, ecosystem thrives on bad news, negative news. Like, hating on shit makes you money. It's plain and simple. There are content creators out there that are millionaires because they make, they look at every single game that comes out and they just shit all over it with their weird ass opinions and make a shit ton of money. Uh, and and then everybody's kind of listening to those opinions and they get really big and everybody's convinced that they are right because they know everything and then everybody's echoing their same, same opinions. And then it's going to be one day that you're going to look back at all those that stuff that you commented. You're going to think to yourself, like, what the fuck was I doing? Oh, like, oh why, why was I smoking? You, why would you complain and spread negativity about something that's really not that much of a big deal? Mm. Just because, like, you make money from it. Just because you make money from trashing on something that's really not that bad. Well, but the content creators, it's just like, in my opinion, it's just a general kind of society problem, but also something that YouTube is not really addressing. For instance, I'm not just pointing out YouTube, but there's more platforms that do this. Um, I mean, it's just a thing. If you're being negative about something, if you poop on stuff, you'll get more views. Like, if you get really big titles that say um, uh, Baldur's Gate um, failed, you'll get so many views of just people you that want to prove you wrong. Why? And, and you know there's, there's going to be so many views of people that agree with you. Like, you know why bad things always get more views and more hype and more 
anything because people like to complain about useless thing, useless stuff because then they don't have to face their own problems. Oh yeah, yeah but, definitely. It's a way of escaping but, their own. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like they can feel in the right, and people love feeling right. They can feel like I'm saying something important. I'm saying the right thing. You should listen to me. And yeah, exactly. They know what they're talking like, about. Yeah. Looking at them and be like, "Can you just shut up for <laughs> one second?" Uh, <laughs> I've made this comparison in one of my videos, but I had a, a person once approaching me to complain about that knew I was involved with you or that I had the Omnic post that I, that was kind of my thing and whatnot. That I played a lot of Overwatch. That I'm an Overwatch content creator. Someone that like uh, I hadn't seen for a really long time. The, the conversation quickly veered towards Overwatch, of course. And um, I started complaining about the game and, and kind of... But I started noticing... I mean... I'm the first to admit that there have been issues and everything. I, you just said it. Like, there's a lot of stuff that didn't go right and whatnot. Uh, but overall, I'm having fun. The game is in a good state. But I do understand not everybody can see that because I'm basically playing it every single day. I, it's like if your kid is growing... How do you say that? No, that would be a weird comparison. But, like, if you if you just kind of dare for it and you kind of see it evolve and you see these small things and you kind of follow the whole trajectory it makes, it, it is... You have a better insight in everything. It's just plain and simple. Um, but that person started kind of um, echoing a lot of bullshit that I've been hearing on all. That is just not correct. That I mean, I would gladly discuss the state of Overwatch with anybody. But the moment you're going to start to throw arguments at me that don't make any sense, that are not correct, kind of stops. And um, I started hearing these. I'm not going to say Reddit opinions, but so these opinions that I felt like, oh shit, that is not your own. But you, you, you read that somewhere. You saw one video of one particular person, and that is where you got your. So I asked them like, uh, but have you played it lately? And they were like, no, 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 I haven't played the game in three years. I think I was like, oh shit, Are you kidding me? Sure, that's you... why your opinion should matter the most. How, how can you be standing near right in front of me and spit in my face about the state of Overwatch if you haven't played the game even before Overwatch 2 was released? That's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, let's change the subject, shall we? And uh, that's just exactly it. That is exactly what is going on. Everybody's echoing these opinions that they didn't formulate themselves, that don't speak out of their own experience, or somewhat talks out of their experience and get expanded into something big. <clears throat> and that whole Phasmo story, I'm not making a direct link between the communities of Phasmo and Overwatch, but it's just like that general entitlement. Like, we need to have an open discussion with the developers. We need to tell them what we want and what we, we expect from them. But if they don't manage to deliver that, you need to draw your... There's so many other games out there. You need to draw your conclusions. Maybe it's time for something different. Maybe it's time for something else. Period. And that, and then you just move on, you know. Moving on, it's a it's a skill set by its own. But anyways, <laughs> uh, look, I'm I'm rather positive. There's a video coming out later tonight. Well, by the time this podcast is live, that video should be out. Uh, I'm kind of positive about the future of Blizzard in general. Like after the acquisition was closed um, with Microsoft, the uh, CEO of uh, Xbox or Gaming at Microsoft, Phil Spencer did this podcast where he was a guest on the the um, Xbox podcast. And one of our community members dropped it on our Discord and I watched it. And after that podcast, I had this kind of sense of relief, this feeling of relief. I mean, I'm not an Xbox player. Uh, I've always favored PlayStation over Xbox. But at the end, I was really thinking, maybe I should get an Xbox. This, guy's no, this guy knows what he's talking about. Just to kind of... Just to show my support, I don't. I'm not going to buy an Xbox. I don't play on console anymore. But it just has this um, newfound respect for someone I didn't know that well. I had heard a lot about Phil Spencer and about Xboxes or, or gaming at Microsoft's vision about gaming, and I had heard these stories about him admitting that Xbox had not reached their goals and Xbox had not. I mean, the last time. I followed the Xbox closely was when I was still working for that gaming magazine and we were at E3 and they announced this whole uh, digital uh, rights management thing they were going to do that you can't pass on a disc to a friend and everybody was writing and PlayStation quickly put it because PlayStation's press conference was uh, later that day and they quickly made these extra slides that this 
stuck in there of people handing discs to each other just to kind of make fun of Xbox, you know? And that was the last time I followed it closely because I felt like, oh, shit. They're going to be those guys. They're going to be the guys that are going to um, uh, crunch down on, on people reselling games, on people passing games from one to the other, which was stupid because if they had not done that, it would have happened eventually because everything is digitally downloaded now. This Nobody buys discs anymore. If they just had waited, they would have gotten what they wanted without the whole PR debacle that followed it. But anyways... He was talking about his vision and how he manages all these companies. And um, I did some more research into, like, I mean, everybody, he is a PR person. He can he can sell you whatever he wants. And and, and I'm very kind of, how do you say that, uh, aware of that. And I, if people like that make statements, I always kind of try to double check. But uh, he, he is, has a very hands-off approach. And his vision is that the teams, the creatives are in lead. They are in charge. They need to make the decisions. He has his opinions. He plays games every single day. He's a really hardcore gamer. And he has his opinions on all the products that they make. But it is the creatives and the good products that needs to come first. And that is so different from what we've seen in the last few years at Blizzard. The last few years at Blizzard, we've seen some good progress on World of Warcraft and Diablo 4 has been a bit of an off and an on story for a lot of people. For me, it's been fun. We have seen the same in Overwatch. Uh, but we've always kind of smelled the hand of corporate on there. Like, profit comes first, profit comes first, profit comes first. And the way he talked about it really got me like, oh shit. I mean, profits, that will come out of, that will come eventually. But he just he just wants to see awesome games being made. He wants to enable those teams. And, and that is what Blizzard needs. That's what Blizzard had back in the day that they lost over the years. And that's what they need to get back to. The old Blizzard is never coming back, but the new Blizzard might arise from the ashes of this whole debacle that will be... Uh, I really... I, like, if you get a chance, go check it out. The Xbox podcast and Phil Spencer. Just Google it and you'll find the podcast and listen to it and we'll watch it. And you'll feel... Um, that's I, I'm, I'm guarantee you, you'll feel that same kind of... Uh, weight the roll of your shoulders where you think like, oh, this guy kind of, he just wants to do the right thing. He wants, He's a gamer himself. He wants to do the right thing by gamers because he knows that the profits will follow. Look at Baldur's Gate. The example that we have recently yeah. just gives, you, gives you the hope because, I mean, since back then, games have been made by nerds for nerds. Yeah. <laughs> but having like a huge company like Xbox being led by a person that has this approach to gaming is so refreshing yeah. because you don't see it that much. So it, it gives you hope for Blizzard and for Overwatch and all the games that are included in that. Yeah, yeah exactly, I mean, exactly. Because you know how incredibly creative and uh, like everyone at Blizzard is if you give them the money and the time <laughs> yeah if you if you leave them to it if you kind of don't bot in and try to get your own agenda in there they will deliver and i mean sometimes they'll fail i mean that's just it we shouldn't you shouldn't expect if you lead the creatives if you leave the creators to kind of do the thing that is going to turn out perfectly every single time project titan the, the predecessor to Overwatch, was a huge disaster but that was that was that passion that they had for that product that they didn't want to give up to but uh, we heard these stories of Jeff Kaplan at that point already kind of knowing that it was not going to happen, but they kept adding new people to the project, like new managers, new uh, people, like new corporate managers or new managers on top of that to try and fix it. And Jeff Kaplan himself said in an interview, like, we knew it not, that was not going to happen, but they're bringing this, this new person. So the only thing you can do is like, all right, let's see what he can do. And then you're six months beyond that. And then you spend another, I don't know, $20 million at that point. And you're like, okay, it doesn't work out. Okay. You know what? There's this other person and they bring in this new guy. And then you have to, and that way they kind of escalated and got to this point. But if you, you listen to them and if they tell you like, this is not feasible, all right, you pull the plug. You need, you need someone on top that has that same passion for gaming and for the games that you make, but also is rational enough to pull the plug when necessary. And the one team that I'm 100% convinced that has that right now, I don't know about Warcraft and Diablo, I don't know the people behind it too well to judge about that. And it's not like I know the people personally and the Overwatch team, but I recognize the management style. And Jared knows is that guy to pull the plug if he thinks, or to push things back if he thinks it's not a priority, if he 
he is the the the, the conductor of that whole uh, uh of that whole epic uh musical piece that they could be making there at that team uh, they just need to get there they need to get all the way of they get need to get all the false notes cut and um they need to change some things and we need to realize as gamers as overwatch fans it's never going to be free it's never going to be there's always something that we're going to have to pay just accept that um it, they are running a business um they won't have the pressure of the stakeholders and bobby anymore but they still need to make money so they can make new products that they can pay their people that they can make profit i mean profit is always a thing we live in a capitalistic world we live in a free market it's just a thing and it will always happen and giving everything away for free that is usually very bad for business in some Especially cases especially cool stuff cool stuff can't be free then we yeah. don't want to have more cool stuff <laughs> But there needs to be a balance and it needs to be a system. And I've said this multiple times by now. I, I hope they evolve to a system where exclusivity is what they monetize. If you want to get this more skin right now, you're going to pay. Mm. If you can wait six months, eh, you can earn it by then. We'll get it to you next year. We'll get it to you in six months. You can earn it. You can buy it with credits. I mean, that's the perfect approach. Like People will start buying the things for their main characters that they play. And even if they want a skin for a character they usually don't play, they can wait a year. Yeah. I'm I'm, the- I'm guaranteeing you that they're going to sell just as much if they use that exclusivity. It's not going to differ that much. There's, and there's going to be a lot less complaining. There's going to be less, a lot less toxicity. It is going to be a community that supports it. It's going to be... It's just, you need to have the balls to do it. You need to have the balls to step up and to go like, you know what? We're going to give it to you in six months or in a year for credits. Now you just need to pay. You need to have the balls to have a system like that. And once you kind of step out of that scared zone where you think you need to monetize everything because the money is going to run out, and you kind of open up, you you unclench that fist, and you open up your hand, and people will just pick the seeds off your hand. And they're not going to try and They're not going to complain that they need to kind of steal them from you you just open up your hand and you're going to pick them off and um people will people love this game and people understand that they need to pay for some stuff uh if they want it now and and you need to stop kind of or they need to stop kind of uh putting everything behind the wall and i do think that might be the like i've said it before now they're going to change the battle pass they're going to change the shop i mean there's a lot they can do i don't think they're going to make it worse and i hope they go far enough to kind of have this idea of a credit shop that they really incorporated into basically the DNA of that whole shop where you I get weekly they rotations. Had, they had good attempts of like the credit shop where you can buy, for example, old Halloween skins with credits mm. or old anniversary skins with credits. Those are good foundations you can build upon. Yeah, they are. And then there's still people complaining that the skins that they wanted are not in there. But you know what? That's the role of the dice. You can't put everything in there. And at some point, everything will be in there. I do, like, at some point, they put most of it. They said they were putting all of them, but apparently they didn't put all of them. Most of the old Overwatch 1 skins for credits just in the hero gallery. Who knows? Maybe a year after or two years after the event, they'll do that with all the other skins. Um I mean, I can live with a system where I have to pay if I want it now, but I know, like, I have 12,000 credits. I don't want that skin right now. It's kind of cool, but I never play this character. I don't play it that much. You know what? I'm going to wait. I'll get it at that point. Um, we'll see. We'll see how this evolves. But I can... Look, let me put it this way. If if this corporate train or this kind of uh, monetization train keeps rolling on the same track that it hasn't been rolling on, on the in the last year, yeah, it, there's no way we can blame Bobby Kotek anymore. He's going to be gone. Yeah, true. <laughs> so at that point, it's going to be showing the true colors of the people that make those decisions and, <laughs> and need to point elsewhere. But I don't. Okay. I I do think that all the developers are kind of more leaning towards like, hey, mm-hmm. can we chill a little bit with the payments and the monetization? Wait, what's the name of the CEO of Twitter again? The CEO of Twitter. No, 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 um, no, uh, Xbox. Xbox, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. We cannot say that Bob did something anymore. No, we need to say <laughs> Phil. But I don't think Phil, like, Phil has a really hands off approach. And, and, you know, a lot of people say that they have a hands off approach, and then you hear these stories. But in his case, like, the Redfall, that game, the Microsoft game that failed so hard, mm. one of the problems that the people that worked there said was that 
Microsoft had such a hands-off approach. And that's what I mean. That is not Microsoft's fault. Microsoft needs to stay in the lane. They don't need to be. You can't fault Phil Spencer for Redfall. You can only fault the management at that studio that made the game. You kind of, apparently it wasn't, or, and that's just the thing, you know what? It kind of becomes this, um, they, 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 they pass the hot potato. So the people that worked there were looking at their own management and going like, yeah, it was so unorganized. There was no vision. The vision changed week over week. Um, and I've, I've been in those companies. I know how they are. And I've, I've, I've went through situations like that myself. Then they're going like, yeah, Microsoft didn't step in because they had a really hands-off approach. Microsoft doesn't need to step in. That's not the job. The job is to enable you not to kind of, they maybe should have changed the whole management, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe they did some changes after this uh, project. I don't know. But you need to correct people at the top of your company. You need to have the proper management. Um, and that can still happen. It can still fail. They'll still have failures in the future. Blizzard will have failures. Microsoft will have failures. But they'll learn from every single one of them. And uh, they won't hopefully make that same mistake. Well, at least three times. They did with Overwatch twice with the whole PvE mm -hmm. thing. Um, I mean, failing at this, the failing is human. And I feel like a lot of people forget that. That, I mean, you learn from your mistakes. That's the only way you can improve upon some things and make things better. Yep. Not everything is going to be great right off the bat. Impossible. And that, yeah, that's that's just not how things work. That's not how life works. So, I mean, that's what I think either you said last week or the week before, that people forget that the devs are also just humans. Yeah, yeah exactly. With flaws and everything. So, like, give them a break. They're doing their best. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And circumstances that have not been easy in the last few years. I mean... I've been following this company for such a long time and, and the, the shit I've seen happening in the last seven years is something. I still can pinpoint it to the moment, moment where they lost Bungie, where Activision lost Bungie, where Bungie kind of uh, divorced Activision. That is the moment that Bobby kind of started looking at Blizzard and went like, squeeze. I, I really think there's a story behind Project Titan and Overwatch and Overwatch 2, that whole flow, mm. where he he was not happy with some of the decisions that were made and that he really kind of really harassed them and pushed them and kind of tried to push his own agenda on them. And sometimes forcefully, I feel like there's a, I feel there's a big story behind all of that. I feel like I've seen other content creators point out some stuff like the way he never mentions Overwatch in anything that he does says and, 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 and some news that we've heard from producers that used to work there and whatnot. I feel like, um, We'll never know. That story is never going to surface. But I definitely think it's there is a story there. We'll see. Well, we'll never see, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's anyways, let's call it a, a day. I think uh, it's time to round things up. Um, I think we uh, we've had a lot to discuss and we went through all of it. Um, <laughs> next week, there's going to be another episode. The week after that, I'm going to be traveling. I'll be at BlizzCon, so... We'll see how we fix that. Maybe I'll be at my hotel and figure out a way to do the podcast. American we'll episode. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an, Amer an American episode that will have a very different background and a very different microphone. But we might be able to make it work. We'll see. Uh, but next week, there's going to be a normal episode. Hopefully, with Hannah or LP will be joining us. I think at some point, I want to get the four of us in one episode. That would kind of be cool. But uh, we'll see. I mean, at this point, Frozen is just part of the cast. There's no way around it. So <laughs> she's just been doing a great job in the last few weeks. So I think a lot of you agree. Um, and we just need to get that. Uh, that would be kind of cool to do an episode with the four of us. I think that would be kind of nice. <coughs> but anyways, Frozen, where can all these lovely people find you? At Frozen Unicorn on Twitter and Instagram. And the first O is a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long we're going to kind of keep this up that we keep adding that. Uh, but I always add, like, I, I tag everybody when I make, uh, when I do promo for the podcast. Uh, now, look, you can, um, let me first start out with thanking our patrons. I think that is quite important. We've gotten a lot of support from some amazing people. You guys are all legends. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you too can be part of this family, the Omnic Post family, if you go to patreon.com slash the omnic post we have uh, next week oh by the way there's something special for the people that are joining before november 1st 
because you guys are going to be the first to kind of join on this platform and to kind of show your support this way, I'm going to make a special exclusive sticker that will only, and I've already started designing it yesterday, I already posted it on uh, on our Discord to show off the first step. I, I have some work to do to kind of, the colors are not that simple. The colors are kind of, because I kind of painted myself in a corner there. But anyways, there's going to be a very exclusive sticker that will only be available to the people that uh, joined in that uh, first month. They're going to be the founders. That sticker is never coming back. Uh, so, uh, and after that, we'll uh, we'll have some for something for the people that join in the first year. And on. But I wanted to make something special for this first group of people. And you can join them. But there's other rewards. There will be digital prints. Other stickers, the Halloween bundles are going out this week. So if you still join this week at the properties, you'll be sent the Halloween bundle of stickers, which include, oh man, I don't know. I think someone is stealing my stickers. There's only two left on my desk right now, but there's like a total package of five. For the people that are watching the video podcast, you can see them on the screen right now. There's the Mondata Lives and the Pumpkin Torbjorn. There's also a, a Voodoo Doctor Breaking Ball. There's a, a Beer uh, sticker for Reinhardt, and the last one is I need to think. Oh, the fish hog, the fish hog. That's uh, really cool, guys. Yeah. So go check it out. Um, and I'm going to do uh, a lot of these kind of words and waves and whatnot. I enjoy making all the merchandise and the stickers. Um, you can listen to this podcast on all the different platforms, uh, or you can watch it on YouTube if you want to see the video podcast. If you are on Patreon and you are the uh, mainframe listener or above, you can actually follow the live stream on Patreon as did uh, we stream today. And I can't see, I can't, there's no chat, so I can't see how many people are watching. But um, there is a live stream every week on Patreon where people can follow the live recording of the podcast. And you also get exclusive uh, or early access to the podcast at that point. Um, uh, and make sure to follow the Omnic post on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube, but also the Omnic Weekly on Instagram and Twitter. All right. I think I said everything I needed to say. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Till then, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. <laughs>